Curses in 5e suck. And it's all your fault, remove curse spell. Well, not entirely. Most D&D curses are boring one-note debuffs even if they weren't easy to remove. But even interesting curses are barely an inconvenience for a fifth level cleric or wizard with remove curse prepared. My name is Ben Byrne and this video isn't just how to make curses matter, but how to make them a central and terrifying threat in your 5e campaign. The Grim Hollow Campaign Guide provides entirely new 5e rules for more effective curses that are difficult to remove and they have escalating effects as the curse gets worse. But what I love about this section is that it's not just a collection of new ways to penalize your players. These curses could be cast by your characters themselves. A cursed NPC could play a central role in your campaign as a quest giver, desperate for the party's aid to break their affliction. Or an antagonist might have succumbed to a curse and the only way to defeat them is to unbind the dark magic that impacts powers them. The storytelling possibilities with these curses is almost limitless. And of course, spiteful curses and dark secrets are excellent building blocks for a dark fantasy world. I'm going to briefly describe how to cast these Grim Hollow Curses, the effects that they can have on their victim, and then give you some ideas to expand these rules and use them as inspiration for campaign building. There are eight new curse spells in the campaign guide, and they range in spell level from fourth all the way to sixth. All full casters have them on their spell list automatically, but you could also hide them in the world, something that the party has to research or discover during their their adventures. Each of these spells has a one hour casting time. They're like an extended ritual that has to happen, but they have a range of self. So the target doesn't actually need to be near you to be cursed. It's almost like a voodoo doll type situation. Each spell also has specific material components, which is an object of significance to the target of the spell. This object could include a shred of the target's clothing, a lock of their hair, or a coin that they once possessed. Each spell additionally has a Shadow Steel material component. Shadow Steel is an arcane metal created through a mix of metallurgy and dark sorcery. Its origins are mysterious in Grim Hollow, but curses cannot be wrought without it. Once the spell is cast, the target must make a saving throw against your spell save DC, but the DC is modified by your relationship with the target. If you only know about them secondhand, your spell save DC suffers a negative 10 penalty, but curses are fueled by malice and hostile emotions. Your spell save DC gets a bonus if the target has transgressed you in some way. Did they betray you, break a deal, or desecrate your home? Maybe you are simply jealous of them. The strength of your hostile emotions contribute bonuses to your spell save DC anywhere between plus two to plus 10 possibly making the curse almost inescapable. If the target fails their save against the spell, the curse takes hold and the effects can be devastating, not just to the target, but also those around them. Curses lay dormant upon the target without immediate effect until the triggering event. Victims may not even initially realize that they've been cursed at all. Triggering events are small but strange occurrences. Someone affected by the curse of insatiable greed has a valuable item mysteriously disappear from their belongings. When a warrior cursed with uncontrollable wrath next draws their weapon, the curse is triggered and an old wound reopens as if it was fresh. Once this triggering event has occurred, the curse's power escalates through three stages and becomes progressively more harmful to the afflicted. At stage one of uncontrollable wrath, you are easily agitated and aggressive. At stage two, the thrill of solo combat intoxicates you. This obsession means that you can't benefit from spells or abilities provided by your allies. And by the third stage of this curse, you can no longer complete a long rest. There's 
too much killing to be done. Every curse has its own fantastic thematic penalties. During stage two of the Curse of Foul Blight, you have disadvantage on charisma saving throws and the air around you lingers with putrescence. At stage three of the insatiable greed curse, you've built yourself a labyrinth hoard of stolen treasures that you can no longer leave. This video is trying to cast the curse of dedicated subscriber. The first stage causes you to hit the like button. These curses escalate over several days. Each dawn, the cursed creature rolls 1d20, and if you roll below the number of days since your curse last escalated, it progresses further. This means that curses are a time bomb ticking down to their culmination. If you can't successfully cure the curse before it culminates, the victim transforms one last time into something horrific. Another Grim Hollow Curse spell I really love is a Boreal Curse, which you can use to turn your enemies into a tree. And why not? It's good for the environment. Don't slay your foes plant them. A Boreal Curse is available with six other Dark Fantasy themed spells on D&D Beyond via Lairs of Etheris. Lairs of Etheris also includes over 75 monster stat blocks, a crafting system, and 20 horror fantasy adventures to dip your toe into the world of Grim Hollow. Hit the link right up here or down in the description to get Lairs of Etheris right now on D&D Beyond, and it also helps support the channel, so thank you. The cumulative stage of each curse changes the victim into a monster. The stat blocks are also in the Grim Hollow campaign guide and they are something else. <laughs> the curse of uncontrollable wrath, turns its victim into an avatar of slaughter. A CR 14 fiend with 60 feet of movement, magic resistance, and four attacks per turn that are likely to be with advantage thanks to its blood frenzy. But when it's slain, the avatar's soul can be captured in a mundane weapon, turning that weapon magical. If the avatar isn't imprisoned in a weapon, it rejuvenates 1d6 days later. And that is Perfect for a monster hunting quest, where this fiend has been terrorizing a region for years. The party must learn how to banish it permanently before fighting it. The curse of foul blight turns its victim into a plague carrion, whose plague touch can reduce hit point maximums, and when this creature is slain, it bursts into a cloud of sickening gas. The Body Snatcher, who was someone cursed with damned aging, seeks a victim whose body to invade. They are undetectable while inhabiting a host. If the Body Snatcher isn't expelled within 24 hours, its host is reduced to a withered skin sack and the Body Snatcher seeks a new victim to invade. These monstrous culminations make curses feel like dangerous magic because the horrors the victims trans transform into, spread the harm that was done onto them. These monsters are all mid to high CR and their unique features make them horrifying opponents. They're also monsters that come with a story baked into them. Why were they cursed? Is there a powerful villain who cursed them? Entire adventures could center on a cursed monster and how it came to be. But what's even worse than fighting a cursed monster is the thought of turning into one of them yourself. If a player character is cursed and that reaches culmination, hand the player the stat block and let them have fun with the ensuing chaos. It's likely the party will need to slay their ex-compatriot, lest the cursed creature spread its suffering onto further innocence. But before the curse culminates, there is still hope for breaking it. The 5e Remove Curse spell deserves a lot of blame for making curses feel like small inconveniences in most campaigns. The Grim Hollow Curse rules make a small change that has a big impact. The Remove Curse spell has a required material component called a Cure component. And a Cure component is an object or essence of something imbued with mystical luck by the very nature of how rare it is and how difficult it can be to acquire. A cure component could be a strand of hair from a missing person, the highest pine cone in a forest, a black pearl harvested only within the last week, or a promise given to you by a hag. 
One cure component is required for each stage that a curse has progressed, possibly requiring up to three of these difficult to find objects. Collecting cure components make fantastic quests where your characters must break a curse inflicting either an NPC or one of the party members themselves. Time is a major threat in itself because the curse must be cured before it culminates. What adventures will your party experience trying to gather these strange components? Can you take a strand of hair from a missing person's pillow? Does your party need to visit an infamous hag who will make a Faustian bargain with them in exchange for a potion called a hag's promise? Be creative with what a cure component is and what adventure your party must undertake to get it. Use the campaign guide to generate ideas, but don't be limited to it. One tweak I've already made to these rules is that a cure component could be an object, maybe owned by the victim, that was used to cast the curse. One of their teeth, the crown of a king or something like that. With the exception being that the shadow steel component can't be used in that way. Shadow steel can only rot curses, it cannot break them. Some curses could also be unbound by fulfilling some impossible condition that was created when the curse was cast. Kind of like Beauty and the Beast. Someone has to fall in love with this horrible monster. A creature cursed with insatiable greed is cured if they willingly give away a valuable object. Let's explore as many story and adventure generating ideas as we can with curses. <laughs> First, it's worth making a distinction between simple and complex curses. Remove curse might work just fine against simple curses like mummy's rot or bestow curse, the spell. This avoids messing up the balance of the established rules of the game, but also lets you get creative with what a complex curse looks like. Use curse monsters as antagonists for monster hunt quests, but you can invent your own curses and monsters to suit your campaign as well. Two quests that really inspired me for this from The Witcher were the Spotted White quest from Blood and Wine and the Botchling quest from the Bloody Baron quest line. Both of those monsters could be defeated without necessarily needing to slay them. And monsters that have alternatives to defeating them make for really fascinating quests. And players feel clever and rewarded for having achieved these alternative victories. The Gravekeeper is a mysterious ghoul who tirelessly drags corpses to bury in its overcrowded cemetery. It's been slain several times already by past adventurers, but the Gravekeeper always returns. Investigating its crypt beneath the cemetery reveals a coffin wrapped in shadow steel chains. The Gravekeeper is cursed, and lifting this curse may be the only way to ensure this nightmarish undead stays dead. Perhaps your players wish to curse an antagonist to themselves rather than confront the villain in open combat. They must first research which curse it is they wish to cast. They also have to research how to acquire or create shadow steel. They have to collect an object that once belonged to their target, like a coin or one of their teeth. Maybe your party is attacked by minions that flee from combat once they've collected a material component for a curse from one of your party members. Collecting either curse components or cure components to cast or break a curse are perfect for creating branches of a larger adventure. What lengths does your party go to to get each of these components? And that's saying nothing of the story building potential of Shadow Steel itself, this kind of mysterious background substance that exists in Grim Hollow. Even within the Grim Hollow lore, it's very mysterious currently. Where does Shadow Steel come from? And could you make magic items out of it, like weapons and armor? If you think the future of Grim Hollow should expand on Shadow Steel and what it's capable of in game. Let us know in the comments because we're currently working on the future of Grim Hollow right now. Alongside curses, you can also make wounds and character recovery feel more impactful in your campaign by watching this video here, which we made about the topic already. Or if you're looking for quest ideas and want your monster lairs to feel like formidable locations, we got you covered in this video right here. Join our Dark Fantasy campaign by subscribing and let us know what else you'd like us to make a video about.